Okay guys, so this is just going to be a quick uh, run through on how to use texturing features in Blender. So let's just jump straight into it. Um, this is the default window you see for Blender. You've got your camera, cube, your light. First thing you'll see when you turn it on. Um, we don't need these for this example, so let's just um, select those. So if you just hit A twice there, you'll select them all and just X delete them. Um, first thing I'll show you to do is how to make maybe um, a floor. So what I would do is I would go to Add, Mesh, Plane. So a flat little square there for our floor. Um, best thing to do first of all is to change the display to textured view and how you do that is right down here you've got this little white circle set to solid at the moment which makes everything just look gray we just click that and hit texture just gonna double check to make sure I'm recording audio yep and we're recording video we are okay perfect so I hit this and I set it to texture and it just uh, it's bright white at the moment because it's blank there's nothing on it so we're gonna give it a texture to make it look like um let's say a tiled floor First thing we need to do is we're going to add a material to it. So up here, top right, got a list of options. Scroll across to this little circle here. This is the material button. And blank at the moment, let's just hit new. Okay, so then we're going to give it a name. Let's call it floor. So I just clicked on that and I typed in floor and enter. Um, you don't have to worry about those options for now. Right next to it, you've got a little square with kind of a checkerboard almost. Uh, click that, this is the texture button. And like the material, we're gonna make a new one. So just click new. By default, it's called texture. Let's call it floor text. You can call it anything at all. So it's just floor texture. By default, it's set to the uh, clouds feature. So let's hit that and you get a list of options. What we want is image. We're gonna put um, an image on this. Click that and it's blank. So, okay, the first thing I would do is um, I'm gonna use, um, we're gonna make a, an extra window here. You know, I'm going to be less formal, okay? I'm just talking to you guys. I've just, this is the, probably the millionth time I've recorded this, so fuck it. Right up here, top corner, you've got this little lines up here. Click that, drag it out, and you've got an extra window. So for us, with just one monitor. Um, you've got this, this side here, 3D view, same over here. Down here, bottom left, you'll see a little cube. That's the, the current display you're using, which is, this is the 3D view. And over here, you can see it's the same. Let's click that. And let's change it to a UV image editor, which is just blank. Okay, so this is our 3D view and this is going to be our texture. Now we want to get um, a texture now. So what would we use? We'd use like um like a tiled floor or something, maybe like a wood floor or metal, concrete, anything you want. Um, you can go online, go to Google and search textures. What I use is a website called uh, cgtextures.com. Go figure. Um, up here, you've got a little search icon. I just literally typed in floor, got a whole host of them, and I uh, downloaded this one here. So this, you can see the tile concrete floor. That's what I'm gonna use. So back to Blender. So over here now, where it says, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Over here, we're over at the um, the texture option still. We call it floor text, it's blank. We need to put that image uh, in here. So to do that, down here, you've got new and open. We wanna click open and then just file, um, find where we saved it. So I've saved it to somewhere specific. Um, to, so this is a list of textures I've downloaded. I'll show you how to do multiple ones, but um, up here, just click that and you can see what you're selecting. And there it is, click that, open. And you can see that black square now has the texture on it. Um, just a preview of what you're working with. Now, um, there's a whole host of options here that frankly, you don't really need to go into detail. Just Things that you need to know, um, scroll down here to where it says mapping. At the moment it says generated, click that and set it to UV. Just do it. And um, Okay, so to put the texture on it, um, w when working with textures, you have to be in edit mode. So to do that, over on this screen, make sure the mouse is over here, hit tab, and you'll see down here, see where it says edit mode? Hit tab again, it goes back to object mode. So that's us going in and out of edit mode and object mode. So make sure it's in edit mode. And also over here, hit uh, U, and you'll see this UV mapping option comes up. So we hit U and hit unwrap. Now, um, I'll go into more detail about that later. So when, when you unwrapped it over here, you can see this little uh, grid has opened up. This represents um, this right here. You can see it's blank here, so it's blank over here. Now we wanna put this image right here. To do that, down here, this little picture icon, just click that, and um, the um, the title, um, sorry, the picture that I used right here, just click that, and you'll see, oop, crossed over. Okay. That's basically it, really. Um, 
you'll know in Unity when you um put a texture on something, you can tile it. You can do um, <laughs> you can tile it. You can um, <laughs> what are you twelve? You can um, yeah, literally um tile the texture. So um again, making sure that it's um a tileable texture as well, one that doesn't look like you'll see seams all over it. To do that, you can do it in Unity or you can do it here. Back into edit mode and over here. If I was to just hit um, S to scale it and drag the mouse back and forth, you can see how it's affecting it over on the other window. If I just shrink it down, bring it back up, and when, it, when you're happy, just hit left click. If you're unhappy, like anything, just control Z. You can apply that to anything, really. You can use that to make uh, walls, ceilings. That's just the flat texture, simple stuff. One thing to note as well is um, you'll see, looking at it from above, looks like floor looks normal underneath it it's blank it only renders on one side and this is how you'll see it on unity as well imagine you've got your um your first person game and walking along but um if it's if basically if you bring this into unity and you've put it uh upside down it's blank and that's usually literally you've just put it upside down if you drag it into uh, unity so just make sure you can see it when you're playing your game okay so that's one feature what I'll show you now is how to do more um, detailed um, unwrapping for uh, objects. So what I'll do is I'm going to make, um, let's make a dice. So I'm just going to delete that for now. Keep all these windows open. So let's add a mesh cube. Bright white again because we're still in texture view. I'll show what it looks like back in solid view. It's just like the default cube you see when you turn on Blender. So back into texture view. So um, I've downloaded a dice texture and just see here so I'm just going to show you how to do um when you're making a floor it's very basic you're just putting in one thing but as you can see this has a uh, multiple parts of this texture I'm going to show you how to do that right now simple stuff so like last time we're going to give it a material first of all up here it's a brand new one let's call it dice and over here again new again dice texture maybe and for it says clouds, image or movie, go to uh, open and oop, let's pick the dice one. Okay, okay, everything is good. So, um, again, over here, we're going to go into edit mode so we can work with it. Um, it leaves the last thing you're working on by default, don't worry about that. To change it again down here, let's hit the dice texture. So by default, you can see it's kind of um, it's unwrapped by itself. It just does that. Okay. Um, so what we'd want to do, we'd want to have each each side has to display one of these numbers over here. So to do that, again, um, as I said earlier, then you have to make sure where it says mapping. Let's make sure that's set to UV. Because that's what we're doing really is we're unwrapping it. So I've selected it, going into edit mode. Now, what we can do here is we can unwrap each individual um, side of this dice so we can work with it individually. Easy way to do that is down here you've got these three little icons, uh, vertex, uh, edge, and face mode. You can see these little dots here if I'm selecting them. That's the one we're working with. So I'll show you what happens actually. If I select these four here, this is this section, and you'll see over here if I press A to select what I'm working on and just G to move it around, it's running a little slow, sorry, you can see how it's affecting it over there. So we want to work with each individual part. And again, what I was mentioning about these is if you hit face select mode, it just makes it easier. See, I'm just right clicking here and selecting each individual part. Again, when I come over here, I'm just hitting A uh, twice. You can see it all kind of highlights in orange and just G to grab, move it around. So what I do, again personally, is I would select each face uh, individually. So I'm going to select it's the front one here, hit U to unwrap it. You can kind of see again the little square. So I hit unwrap. It's exactly the same. So unwrap. I'm unwrapping them all until I'm going to make sure I've done that correctly now. Yeah, I think that's all of them. So not really taking into account like where you would see um, the numbers on the dice. So let's just hit face one here. Um, so select it over here. Double tap A to select it. Then um, 
so what do we want? Let's say we want the number one to display here. So if I hit G and grab it, and you can see what I'm doing, I'm moving it in place, and then I'm gonna press S to scale it, so S, and I'm just shrinking it down. Get a better look by just uh, little mouse wheel, just move, zooming in here. Again, G, grab. So you can see it's a little tedious, all right. So that's more or less one side done. And that's how, um, that's one way of doing it. You can just select them all and shrink them down. Now, let's undo, see if we can do and undo all of that. Let's move the square back. So one thing you'll notice, if I select these all, they're all pretty much in the same area over here. So if I select them all by hitting A, then over here, selecting them all as well, make sure that everything's selected over here and over here. If I grab it, you can see they're all being affected. One thing you can do is just scale it down. Again, grab, scale it down. Again, this is all very informal. Uh, apologies if it's too fast or whatever, if I'm going uh, too fast or too slow or I'm not explaining things. F feel free to ask me anything, lads. I'm always available. And um, so what I did there is um, I, I shrunk down all the sides. And then what I could do then is I could just select the face I want, then uh, move it over here, grab the face I want. And again, just doing this very rough at the moment. Over here, grab it, move over here. So what I'm basically showing here is um, each individual, pa individual part can be uh, unwrapped and um, affected over here. So just uh, grab it. And that's if, say, you're making... Imagine this was um, a crate in your um, in your game and you uh, downloaded a texture of a crate. Let's say, I'll just show you what that would look like. Just maybe here. Yeah, you could download this image, uh, pop it in here, and then you'd, you'd want to use that for like maybe the sides and then you'd use, you could use the same for the top as well. But again, it's just to show you if you want to unwrap individual parts, um, select the part you want, hit U to unwrap it, and over here, just uh, grab it, move it around, scale it back. Okay. Okay, now that's, that's one way you can do it. Okay, so we've um, made a kind of a floor and we can use that for making walls and ceilings. That's exactly the same. Well, I've shown you how to do um, like a cube and that just shows you that you can uh, unwrap individual sections. Let's just do a cylinder as well. A lot of it is the, oops, excuse me, that's wrong. Add mesh cylinder. A lot of it is the same principle as the last, but just a few different techniques. Um, so what do we want to do? We want to maybe make this into like a metal pipe perhaps, or you know, it could be a tree trunk, anything at all. Let's just do a metal pipe. So we want to add a texture just around the actual cylinder itself, depending on how you use it in your game. Imagine it's um, a pillar, like you wouldn't even see anything up here at the bottom because it'd be in the ground or in the ceiling. So we're just going to show you how to do um, around the sides here. So like last time, we're going to make sure we're in a textured view. Again, it's all bright white, but you can see what it looks like here. If you're unsure, and then just back into textured mode, bright white. And we're going to give it a material. Let's just say, I don't know, pipe. And texture it, new texture, pipe text. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're going to change the mode to image. Make sure again, mapping coordinate is set to UV. And let's, I've downloaded a few textures here. Let's use just this metal base one. Okay, so I'm gonna jump into edit mode. Again, by just by pressing tab and then pick my texture here. And you can see, when whenever you do that, again, as I said earlier, it automatically unwraps it. And this is what it looks like now. Top doesn't look too bad, bottom doesn't look bad, but the side is all kind of messed up. It's all over the place really. And that's just because that's how it unwraps it by default. So to get a cleaner looking version of that, if you select individual, each individual part, you can see if I just select that, and if I just grab it, you can barely see, but um, it, it's taken each individual part and unwrapped it individually over this, which just doesn't look right. So what you want to do really is you want to um, imagine this is just um, 
like a cardboard tube or whatever it is and um you wanted to draw over it what you might do is you would um take like a a knife and then just kind of cut it down here and around here and literally take it off and unwrap it and lay it down flat so you could put draw on it or put your texture on it like it was a flat piece of paper to do that for this one we need to um first of all we need to mark a seam on it where we wanted to um where we want to make our cut so what we would do is uh either in vertex select mode or edge select mode um we'll just show you what it's like in vertex select mode select this uh top point here and underneath and make sure that it's a line or an edge then press space and you'll get um kind of a shortcut menu here so just oops sorry space and type in the words mark so it's mark scene, but if you type in mark, it's the first one you'll see. If you, so if you just select that, you'll see now it's kind of a red line going in here. This is where we've marked it to be cut. Now, again, we're only working with this side, so we only want to select that. Leave this one and this section here alone. Now, um, I've shown you a few shortcuts how to select uh, multiple parts. If you're in the face select mode, you could select each individual part. Quicker way of doing it is if you just hold down Alt and be on one of these lines here and just right click and it selects the whole thing. Now I selected all this and I have my seam marked. If I was to just looking at the front here, if I was to unwrap it now, it lays it out like um a grid here. It's like it's it's like I've cut it down here and literally just unwrapped it and laid it down flat. And what you leave in the spot right now is that um the texture is a lot cleaner. It goes all the way around, it's less blotchy and like all the other ones, if I jump into edit mode again, you can uh, select all this and oops, running out, so sorry. Grab it and move around. And this is uh, also a seamless texture as well, so it should look more detailed even if I scale it up a bit. Yeah, so marking a seam allows you just to get this more um, detailed and accurate look to um, a texture. And that's all there really is for um, cylinders. The top was done by itself. So I'll just show you some quick modeling as well. Like say this is um before I bring it over to Unity, I want to make this like a, a metal pillar. What you might do is um these tools down here allow you to shape the actual mesh itself. So if I was to click the transform option here and then just drag this blue line. You can see you can uh, like a metal pillar. And again, if it, if I was to swap that out for um I don't know, like a tree bark or um, I don't know, like a painted um, tile or anything like that. It would um, work perfectly for it, really. So that's all there is, uh, lads. I have to say, um, it's fair. You know, parts of it can be tedious. There's lots of shortcuts and tricks around it. I've barely scratched the surface of what you can do with this um, program, especially in terms of texturing. You can add uh, bump mapping, um, make it look a lot more um, high res, and all of it's basically this the, the type of um type of texture you use so if that's of any help to you i um, hope it's of any help to you guys and um if you want any more of these or you know again if you just want to drop me a message i'll be more than happy to give you some tips on what to do so yeah that's it um hope that was some help goodbye